Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Ali Corman, Justin Nielsen here with a breakdown of the action in today's session, Monday, August 21st. And it was a mega cap tech led day. NVIDIA really looking strong. Justin, a lot to get through today. What do you have for us? Yeah, we'll definitely talk a little bit about what was going on in the markets and also uh, talk about some of the stocks that are holding up. And so today's uh, today's session will be sponsored by the letter A. We'll go over Adobe, ADP and ANET. All right, we'll do that. But first, let's take a look at those major indexes. The Nasdaq leading the way today, finishing up 1.6%. The S&P 500 up seven tenths of a percent today. On the downside, we did have the Russell 2000 just fractionally negative and the Dow down one tenth of a percent today. So we had a pink rally day on Friday for the Nasdaq and a follow up on that today with a strong day of gains, Justin. Yes. So that's that's good, but it's not enough yet. Right. So when we're talking about looking for an uptrend after we've seen some type of pullback or correction, what we want to look for is we want to look for what we call a fall through day. And that's a confirmation that the rally is for real. Uh, you know, and now keep in mind when we do get a follow through day, while we do use that as a signal for buying, it doesn't tell us how long that uptrend will last or how powerful it would be. But what we do is we take the first rally day and then we wait. Uh, we count at least four days. And then on the fourth day or later, if we see another day of power, that's when we say, okay, you know what? This might be a, a market that's worth uh, trying out. Mm -hmm. So right now we're on day two, you know, pink rally day on, on Friday, good action where we saw support uh, come in and uh, you know, the, the, the selling stopped. We saw some buying come in now. One of the issues that I have with today, and this was this was pretty much plaguing the day for you know the, the, the whole day. It was real, really back to those big caps, right? The breadth was just not there. And you see that with the Russell 2000 and Dow Jones not participating. Um, but if you look at the advancers versus decliners, um, looking at Thinkorswim, I'm showing that the decliners on the NASDAQ composite actually beat the advancers uh, by about, um, I, I'd say, 11 to 10 uh, and then on the NYSE, it also had the decliners beating the um, advancers. And that was uh, a, a little bit more dramatic there. So right. if, if you don't have breadth, you know, that's something that does make it for harder, harder, uh, harder gains to come by. Uh, you just can't have leading the entire thing. Um, you know, we, we had that earlier in this year and it was just tough to make progress. It definitely was, uh, but we'll have to see if the mega cap techs can continue to help fuel the market higher. And, you know, Justin, we do have NVIDIA earnings on Wednesday. Wednesday would be day four of the rally attempt. So who knows Wednesday? And it's Wednesday night, right? So maybe Thursday right. uh, could be a key day to watch for us out there. Uh, and of course, we can't predict what that reaction is going to be like. But last quarter, NVIDIA's earnings reaction did help fuel a little bit more breadth in the market with at least more AI related plays mm -hmm. really starting to join the party. Can it repeat after two big gap ups already uh, in the last two quarters? Uh, we'll, we'll have to see, but a strong day, no doubt for NVIDIA with uh, analysts with very bullish commentary heading into this report. Yeah. And I don't remember what the details were on that report, but I do remember that their guidance came out so phenomenally above what anyone was thinking. It was just like, you know, oh, we're, we're, we're not we're not going to the 10 yard line, uh, you know, on, on our own 10. We're going to the other team's 10. I mean, it was that far removed. Uh, so, again, that was definitely, as you said, really fueling an AI move. Um, and it really kind of brought the whole market along with it. And right. um you know, again, we could see that happen again, but uh, there's also the Jackson Hole uh, comments yeah. from Powell that'll happen later on this week. Um, and, you know, we'll take a look at the bond market. Uh, that's that's something that is uh, it's something to watch. You know, it, it's been it's been really tough for bonds out there. And, uh, you know, the yields got getting back up to highs. Um, that's something that could put pressure on these growth names as the higher yields do put some uh, pressure on the you know the future 
future discounted rates of um, earnings. Absolutely. So very clearly getting above that intraday peak that we saw in October of 2022. And if we go to a weekly chart, we actually have to go to a monthly chart uh, to right. see the previous high going back, Justin, it looks like uh, to you know early 2008 or so with mm -hmm. a 10 year with where it is at now. So that that's a pretty sky high mark when you put it into that context. In that context, but uh, if we went further out, uh, you know, and we we kind of looked at more, you know, maybe a, a half a century, uh, you know, we we certainly are comparing to a very low yield uh, environment that we've had for over a decade. So right. uh, it's 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 really kind of again stark contrast to what we've seen in the last decade, but not that unusual in the last uh, you know half century or so. Mm -hmm. Yes, that added context is good to note, Justin, there. Let's move on and just take a quick look uh, at the weekly chart for the S&P 500 and the Dow. So we did get a close below the 10-week line last week, Justin, for the S&P and the Dow joining the NASDAQ below that level. So that seems like a key area to watch for all of the major indexes in this rally attempt. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things we noted on IBD Live today was that the 21 day is now below the 50 day moving average line on the NASDAQ. So uh, we have this um, kind of little clue that we call a power trend that we've had for a good portion of this year. And that turned off, you know, it just kind of tells you, hey, the, the indexes are not in that super trending strength right now. Uh, and especially when they're trading below their 50-day moving average lines, that's something that we view very negatively. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't have a turn. Uh, and sometimes those turns will happen below the 50-day moving average lines. But clearly, the direction right now has been down. And so, again, we need to see that evidence that things are turning around uh, before we, we put our hard-earned money to work. Yes. Very well said there. And next on our list, let's take a look uh, at another signal of breadth, and that is comparing QQQ versus QQEW. So here's QQQ up 1.6% uh, today, and QQEW, the equal weighted NASDAQ 100, up less than 1.1%. So again, mega cap dominated there. And then SPY versus RSP, the S&P uh, ETF up about 6 tenths of a percent today, RSP flat on the day. So, so once again, a very concentrated level of strength that we're seeing out there. Right. And without that breadth, uh, this is one of the things that we were talking about with Jim Ropel on the podcast last week, uh, where, you know, he, he was stable as you can get the lower the number, the more stable the earnings. And so while the EPS growth rate isn't spectacular at 10%. That's still double digits for a three to five year time frame and very stable. So that's something that I think is a positive. So maybe not one that's going to move a huge amount like NVIDIA and some of these tech names, AI names that we have uh, saw earlier this year, but it's, it's a solid performer. And uh, sometimes it's nice to have not everything high octane in your portfolio. Mm hmm. And our last of the A trio is ANET Arista Networks up 2.3%. Again, lacked volume, but it's trying to get out of this sideways range just above 180. Yeah. So since its last earnings report, you had that big gap up, a uh, huge spread, a lot of price discovery. And right now it's really just been tight within that single day from the earnings report. So it's it's really kind of setting up some boundaries. If you see Anet, you know, take out those highs, I think that's something that will be worth watching. Um, this, this is definitely a big name in the computer networking. A lot of things that this is doing, uh, in a lot of ways, they really were taking Cisco's lunch uh, from, you know, its early leadership position. Um, so that's, that's what I'm really looking for. Can it break out of this range? Now, if it goes the other way, if it starts breaking in, uh, breaking down and filling in that gap, that's that's going to be that's going to be not so great news. Um, now, one other thing to just kind of keep in mind is looking at this chart, you see that ain't it got wild. You know, I mean, the, the, the last earnings report, it had a, a, a pretty negative reaction to it, you know, and then it, it 
jammed up, uh, got really choppy um, this last earnings report. So a, a lot of big moves up and down. So what I like about the current action is that it did take a breath. It did do some tightening up. Uh, so it doesn't have to come out now. It could still remain tight for a little bit longer, kind of get some of that uh, wildness uh, that it had in its past uh, a little bit further behind it. Uh, but I, I, I do like the tight action right now. And uh, it's, it's definitely one to watch. And you can't, you can't deny that those earnings are pretty powerful as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well said, Justin. That is it for today, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will be back with more tomorrow morning on IEBD Live, and we hope you join us, investors.com slash IEBD Live, for all the details on that. David Ryan, three-time U.S. investing champion, will be joining us as he does every Tuesday. And so we will get his updated take on the market, how he is positioning ahead of the NVIDIA earnings and Fed news later this week. So a lot of fun stuff to come. We'll see you in the morninginvestors.com slash IEB Life for that. And then we'll also see you right back here tomorrow at the close.